Well, Made in China survived recoil, where Made in Philippines did not. And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be doing the Vortex Viper HSD 6 to 24 by 50 and compare it to the Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. Now, both of these optics MSRPs are fairly different. The Strike Eagle's MSRP is $799 US, whereas the Vortex Viper HST is $949 US. That's a pretty big difference. So why am I comparing the two? Well, the retail price is actually the same. I was just checking out brown nails and they were both $699. So that makes them pretty darn comparable. Now, mind you, this one has been on the market for, I want to say, around eight or nine years. I might be a little bit wrong about that year, but it's pretty close to that. And the Strike Eagle, well, it just came out in 2020. So it's kind of normal in the sense that the Strike Eagle has a lot of features and is a little bit better than the HST. But we're going to be going over those regardless. So as far as glass quality goes, take a look at this. is 25 magnification now from what I've seen the vortex Viper HST and the strike Eagles glass is very comparable however the strike Eagles glass is brighter obviously because it has a 56 millimeter tube compared to a 50 millimeter tube you can tell that it's much bigger so for glass, we're definitely going to give the points to the Strike Eagle. Next, we have eye relief. Now, the eye relief on the Strike Eagle is 3.7 inches. And I didn't find the change in to, from the highest magnification to the lowest magnification as drastic as it was on the Vortex Viper HST. The Vortex Viper HST at the lowest magnification is 4 inches, whereas at the highest, I felt was something around 3.5. So that's a fairly big change and means you might have to shift your cheek position, which I did find on the HST. So in that aspect, they're kind of similar, but I would go with the less change over more change. So we're going to give the point again to the Strike Eagle. Next, we have the Focus Parallax. So this is important for a lot of air gunners. For example, uh, it goes all the way down to 15 yards, whereas the HST only goes down to 50 yards because a lot of people with air guns are shooting at 20 yards, 30 yards, 10 yards, and that really does matter to them. I did find the focus parallax adjustment on the Strike Eagle was a little bit stiffer than it was on the HST. On the HST, it feels perfectly smooth. Now, mind you, this is after it was sent in for repair twice and they snugged it up. The first time it had a little bit of slop and now it has none. And this one also has no slop whatsoever. So in this aspect, I would give the point again to the Strike Eagle. It focuses down at a closer distance, but the HST was a little bit smoother. So just keep that in mind. Next, we have recoil. Now this, <laughs> yes, sir. One of them definitely takes the win. Now the Vortex Strike Eagle 525 by 50, I've probably put around two or 300 rounds through it. The HST, well, I probably put around four. It was sent in originally because the windage adjustment fell off, which I don't know, guys. I don't know. Well, uh, this is actually a pretty interesting development. <laughs> uh, I was adjusting the um, the windage while we were seeing how much windage adjustment it has, and I mean, this popped out. <laughs> Okay. I don't know why. And then I sent it in again because it had a point of impact change under recoil. Now you're probably thinking, well, how much recoil did I give it? Was it a 50 BMG? Did I strap it to a tank? It was a 5.56 five, or 223. So very mild recoil. I was shooting out at 400 meters and I realized I not hitting my target at all and I really couldn't figure out where I was sitting because it's a lot of grass. And then I walked all the way back to 100 meters and I had not touched the windage adjustment and I was eight MOA off at 100 meters. Now that is drastic. That is, that is a lot. That is a lot. So that was the second time I sent it in for a pair and Vortex's diagnosis also came back with the same results. So they fixed that up for me and they sent it back again. So that's great. 
So technically now they should both survive under recoil. However, we're definitely gonna give the point to the Strike Eagle. Now people are always saying, oh, well, made in China, made in China. Well, made in China survived recoil where made in Philippines did not. Next, we have the reticle. Now on the Vortex Viper HST has the VMR reticle. You can get an MOA, you can get it in MRAD. Now the subtensions in the reticle go by two MOA per line. Now on the Strike Eagle, now this is a badass reticle. This is the, e the EBR7C reticle. You can also get it in MRAD or MOA. I chose MOA because I'm just more familiar with it. Now, is it personal preference or is one generally more usable? I would say the EBR7C is generally a lot more usable. It has a lot more holdover points in it and it's far more usable. And I actually like it a little bit better. It's also a glass etched reticle, whereas the HST is a wire reticle. So those two things matter. A glass etched reticle is a lot more durable than a wire reticle ever could be. So we're gonna give the point again to the Strike Eagle. Now, mind you, this is a much less expensive based on MSRP, but retail is just the same. So for the turrets, the HST has 65 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, which is great. Uh, it's maybe a little bit on the low side, you know, in 2020. Maybe about eight years ago, that was like, oh, it's a lot. Now it's kind of like, eh, I want a little more. Considering the Strike Eagle has 110 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. Mind you, mind you, there are a few things that make one maybe slightly more desirable than another. The HST has a soft type zero stop, which isn't as good as the hard type zero stop in the Strike Eagle, but you can use more of the internal adjustment in the HST, whereas in the Strike Eagle, you can only use 47 MOAs worth of internal adjustment once you install the zero stop. And it doesn't matter how much MOAs on your rail you have on your rifle. It doesn't matter. I had it on a zero MOA rail, I could only crank it to 47. I put it on a 20 MOA rail, I could still only crank it to 47. So if you have like a 30 MOA rail, well that should leave you with about 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustments to use in this object. Mind you, the erector tube might be a little bit canted like this and you might be looking at it a bit like that in order to get a clear picture. So there, there's a few things to consider with that. Now, in design, I'd say the Strike Eagle is far more usable. You have your first set of numbers in big here, which is your first rotation. And on your second rotation, you have little numbers in bracket. So it goes 25 MOAs per rotation, which is a lot. This one only has 12. And on the second row, well, it'll obviously go all the way to 49. So there is a lot of great, great things on the Strike Eagle that really just aren't there on the HST. But then again, this is eight years later, eight years worth of innovation. And this is what they came up with. And I'd say it's pretty darn badass. So lastly, there is the warranty. So the warranty is obviously gonna be the same for both of these optics because they're made by the same company. Well, duh. So, so what do I think about these optics? Would I choose one over the other? Well, I certainly, certainly would. If I had the money, which I mean I do, I would pick the Strike Eagle every time. Mind you, some people prefer a thinner reticle for their extended long range type shooting. Uh, I, I found, you know, the Strike Eagle wasn't that bad at the highest magnification. A lot of the time with first focal plane, uh, I forgot to mention that earlier as well. This is a second focal plane. This is a first focal plane. A lot of the time with the first focal plane is at the lowest magnification, it's, well, useless. And at the highest magnification, it's usually a little too thick. That wasn't the case. Well, I mean, it was the case at the lowest magnification, but at the highest magnification, it wasn't even all that thick. It was actually really nice and, and fairly thin. So I really like that for precision target shooting. That's really something I like to see. Whereas with the, uh, whereas with the VMR reticle, it was it's still a decent thickness throughout the magnification range because, well, it stays the same size. Uh, one other thing I did forget to mention is the Strike Eagle has illumination, whereas the HST does not. And well, this is a 34 millimeter tube and this is a 30 millimeter tube. So you're gonna have to buy maybe some slightly more expensive rings. I went with uh, modular driven technology scope rings. They make some really good scope rings for the price. I mean, if you have about $100 Canadian or that's about $75 US, you can have a really good set of scope rings. That's actually what I've changed all of my uh, testing platforms to. So all of my scope rings are now all MDT. So 
If you're looking at picking either of these up, check out the links in the descriptions below, although my recommendation is obviously going to favor the Strike Eagle. <laughs> I've had much more success with it over the HST. So if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review.